Good afternoon, I am Corey Lang. And I'm Robert Thompson. You are tuned in to Put Me In, Coach. And for all you bench warmers out there, we're here to put you in the game. After three years, the Pro Bowl finally went back to its original setup, the AFC versus the NFC. Andy Reid coached the AFC for the sixth time, and Jason Garrett coached for the NFC. Taking place in Orlando, Florida after being played in Hawaii for 31 years, here are some of the stats from the key players that took the field. The starting quarterback for the AFC, Alex Smith, only threw for 74 yards but had one touchdown. And Andy Dalton, who relieved him, 100 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Then you have Demarius Thomas, 37 yards. Travis Kelsey coming in with 36 yards and a touchdown. And the elusive of Emmanuel Sanders with only eight yards. You know, Emmanuel Sanders, he, uh, he didn't do so hard in the regular season either. He was always up and down and didn't have much to do. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was kind of a rough season for the Broncos, but they plan to bounce back. But now for the NFC, we have Dak Prescott at quarterback with 52 yards, and he was the starter. Drew Brees, 112 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Oh, then you got Big Z, you know, the talk of the year with 20 yards. Doug Baldwin, as he uh, increased his potential in the, during, as the season went on, he had 67 yards, one touchdown. And then Des Bryant, 59 yards, and that was it. So we have the Raiders. The big talk is about the Raiders moving. So after the Raiders officially announced a move to Vegas, they, they may not, it may not just happen as we thought. Casino Mogul Sheldon Adelson has pulled out of a deal to build a 1.9 billion stadium for the Oakland Raiders in Las Vegas. I don't, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of cash. And then yeah. him backing out like that out of nowhere, Something's not right. Yeah, it can be. It's just crazy. Also, the league will not have to ask owners to waive a rule prohibiting the casino oper operators from owning a team. If the stadium is built, it is set to hold around 65,000 fans. The location of the stadium has not been set, but it is rumored to be just off the Vegas, Las Vegas Strip. And now I've never been to Las Vegas, but I'm pretty sure. It's going to be a pretty uh, good location for a stadium. Yeah, I agree. I've never been myself, but I can just imagine, you know? Oh, yeah. So voting for the team move still needs to take place if the move is to happen, though. As for now, the team, the team is still supposed to have the name of the Raiders. Raiders move, and the Chargers also might, are moving to L.A. Once moved to L.A. in 1960, but moved back after one season, failing to earn attendance in crowds. It's been 56 years since the, San, the Chargers have been named San Diego. Once again, moving to L.A. after the owner, Dean Spaniel, says the team was not competing financially in their stadium in San Diego. Until the Inglewood Stadium is complete, the L.A. Chargers will play in the, in the Step Hub Center, which only seats 30,000 fans. Now, that's a huge difference from the 65,000 for the Raiders to this one. As of now, Dean Spanos is planning on keeping the name of the Chargers. Uh, leaked photos have been released that the symbol for the um, Chargers would be similar, pretty similar to the L.A. Dodgers baseball team logo with the L and the A. And I don't think the fans is too happy about the move, Corey. No, I've, saw, I've seen plenty of photos with uh, burnings of the jerseys and stuff like that and almost riots. A uh, little LeBron action. A little LeBron clean? action, yep. <laughs> So the mayor, Kevin Faulkner, stated that Sopranos made a bad decision and he will regret it. Mayor Faulkner also stated San Diego didn't lose, char lose the Chargers. The Chargers lost San Diego. Rex Ryan, Jeff Fisher, and other coaches around the league lost their jobs this season. And we'll discuss more, more of those when we get back. So
So, coaches on the hot seat and who's been fired. You got Rex Ryan and his brother Bob Bryan for the Buffalo Bills. He promised the Bills fans playoffs, but it didn't happen. And he tends to he tends to disappear in big moments. But just to add on that, he, I think he's going to be done coaching. I think he actually want to be an analyst now, maybe for a year or two, and see what happens then. Yes, in game 16 against the Miami Dolphins, uh, Rex Ryan, he's supposed to be a defensive specialist, but like Rob said, he just uh, disappears in big moments. But the Bills' defense allowed opponents to score more than 27 points in the six of the last nine games. Players complained about defense uh, ran by Rob Ryan, that it was being just too complicated and the same thing was being said last year. Gus Bradley with the Jacksonville Jaguars, he also has been fired on, on Black Monday. No other team had won an offseason as, as much celebration as the Jaguars did. They drafted Jalen Ramsey, who was a pretty good safety for Florida State, and Miles Jack in the first two rounds. The team spent a big free, big free agency to get the roster, the roster squad like the playoff does, but they did not have the man for the job. Bradley was over his head, and the offense was just not having any communication with each other and ended with Blake Bortles struggling week after week. Bradley just could not build around what he had and could not win. Bradley was not the only problem, but it was a good step in the right direction. You got Jeff Fisher with the L.A. Rams. Man, he was something else to he see. He was. Man. So it's, just, it's the first season in L.A. after leaving St. Louis. It did the complete opposite of what everyone expected. Jeff Fisher, he, uh, he got called out by Hall of Famer Eric Dickerson. Fired and uh, Fisher fired back, and he, could just not, he did not win the battle. While firing back to Dickerson, he uh, lied in the process. Had, and he had an excuse for everything. Yeah, it just, it just, Jeff Fisher, I don't know. I think it's time for him to sit it down. Man. Yep. So you got Chip Kelly with the San Francisco 49ers. If you ask me, I think he just need to go back to college football, man. It just seemed like that's where he's best and comfortable at. It's, e it's either he uh, goes back to college football or he does what Rex Ryan does in just analysis. And yeah. He, he has not enough, he, he hasn't had enough time. I mean, people are saying they haven't, he hasn't had enough time coaching. His overall NFL record was 28 and 35 with a 440 uh, average. And he was 0-1 in the postseason. The offense was not the same as it was when he was in Oregon. Just like I said, man, it was pretty elusive when he was in Oregon. He, he was proved most to be a disappointment. The last coach to be fired this season was uh, Mike McCoy with the San Diego Chargers. Nothing he did was impressive, but nothing he did was bad either. Uh, the team finished 9-7 and seven his first two seasons, and they won a playoff game first year. Yeah, but... It's kind of tough in that AFC, man. You got the Chiefs, you know, the Raiders on the come up, and, you know, you got the defending champs, the Broncos. So I think it's time for them to change. But the team, the team has been plagued with injuries these last two years. They lost Keenan Allen both seasons, which is tremendous. Uh, they also lost, well, when they had Melvin Gordon, he got hurt too. Yeah, he kind of a bust, if you ask me. Eight of their last seasons were decided by a touchdown or less. So they were in the, every game. But most of the games, but they just couldn't capitalize. Also, he had to deal with the relocating on top of all the team issues. When we return after this break, we'll take a look into some possible big player movements, man, for this offseason. <laughs> Rob, so the first big free agency we saw, is, it's going to be a free agency, is Kirk Cousins. He's looking for around $24 million, a $3.5 million increase from the Redskins. Has produced in the last two full seasons for the team, 97-plus player rating in 2015 and 2016. 
He's a possible franchise tag and continue negotiations. Redskins could tag him for the league average for the third straight straight time. But if you ask me, I mean, I think they need to sign him. It's not that many good quarterbacks left out here in the league, you know, it's, and it's hard to find a quarterback. So I think they need to sign him. But if they do not tag him, then he wouldn't be able to be there next season. This would give him tons of leverage in negotiations. The Redskins, uh, they could match an outside team's offer and hope that Cousins does accept it. Uh, they could trade for the first, first round picks. Rumors have also surrounded around Cousins being traded to the 49ers if they hire Kyle Shanahan. If they make the hire, they may be planning to offer their number two draft pick in the upcoming draft. Also, we're going with Alshon Jeffrey, another free agent. Uh, he finished third among receivers in pure receiving grade, even though he missed a large chunk of the, of the season. Yeah, he, he's a pretty good athlete, man, a good receiver. He will be looking for big money, like Des Bryant, De Demarius Thomas money during the free agency period. Uh, the Bears will look to keep him with their large $50 million in cap space, but there's also three teams that stand out to pursue him. You got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tennessee Titans, and the Cleveland Browns. That would be a nice receiving core to go to the Bucks. It really would. All three would have a good amount of cap space to hire the star receiver, and all three there need a vertical threat to make a large difference in their offense. Uh, one player that has already declined the team he was with was Eric Berry. Says that they were unable to uh, reach common grounds. Every team needs a safety. Uh, and he is one of the best in the league, and he is in his prime time. So the Chiefs will need to pay up if they, if they really want Eric Berry back on their squad. Hey, yeah, they better pay that, man. He's a good, he's a good safety, probably going to be one of the greatest. Chiefs will possibly have to look to make cuts to, to players such as Nick Foles, a $10 million contract to make space for the deal Berry is looking for. Nick Perry only uh, increasing his snaps and stats each season. Perry is becoming a much bigger player for the Packers defense. Even with a broken hand, he was able to sort of stay atop the sack, the sack leaders for the Packers this season with 11 sacks. Yeah, there's some pretty tough guys in the NFL. You can put that club on and keep playing. That's a lot of pain to go through. So rumors have come to whether he will be re resigned, released, or traded. Most likely, the Packers will look to pursue an agreement with the young develop, developing pass pressure, though. The next one is Terrell Pryor. I mean, he was, he, he was a tank at times yeah, this season. Yeah, that former yeah. Buckeye, man. He, I mean, he was a running back, quarterback, and his prime uh, wide receiver. For Pryor, however, it is most likely that he will test free agency this offseason. Even if he doesn't sign with another team, he would like to see what he is worth if he describes to make a deal with the Browns. Possible teams to try to make a deal with Pryor is the Tampa Bay Bucks, Tennessee, Titans, Cincinnati, and New England. You know, he's going to be good. I mean, New England, he, that would be a good spot yeah, for him. That's pretty dangerous. Got Tom Brady, uh, Gronk. Yeah, that, that's dangerous. Deion Lewis as a re good receiving running back. That's two quarterbacks, actually. You uh, can even yeah. put him out quarterback, put Brady out. You don't need do Garoppolo. Some passing. Yeah. <laughs> Garoppolo could go if, yeah, if that's you the case. Yeah, let him go, most definitely. The last uh, big free agent, Le'Veon Bell. Uh, the lar largest possibility for Bell this offseason is that the Steelers will use their franchise tag worth $12.7 million to keep him for one more year and then renegotiate. Yeah, he, he's the best back in the league, man. Got to give it to Just him. Just how he, when he gets the ball, he stops, pivots, nah, and then goes. That's that patience. He got a lot of patience. No other there. running back could do that in the NFL if they tried. Yeah, you're right. You're definitely right. He, he's adding something new to the game, you know. So, Bell has start, He has stated that he wishes to remain a stiller, but we'll have to wait and see where Pittsburgh uh, move is later on. When we return, we are going to look how – both our two Super Bowl teams made it to Houston for, the, for Super Bowl 51.
So the playoffs began with the wild card round. In the AFC, the Texans beat Derek Car beat the Raiders with who was Derek Carless, 27 to 14, and the Dolphins. The, the Steelers beat the Dolphins 30 to 12. Did you watch any of that Steelers and Dolphins game? Yeah, man, it just a Jahi man. It, it wasn't like in the in the regular yeah. season playoffs. I mean, they, they it's a couldn't, different story, man. And they couldn't stop Antonio Brown. Oh, no. He was running those slants and he was gone. Yeah, man, I agree. I definitely agree. In the NFC, the Seahawks defeated the Lions 26 to six, and the Packers beat the Giants 38 to 13. You could tell Odell Beckham he didn't go propose to that field goal and that. If he would have, they might have won that game. Yeah, oh, Odell. He don't tend to show up that much in the playoffs so far. So, I mean, we're going to see. But in the divisional round, we got the Falcons beat Seattle 36-20, and Green Bay nar narrowly um, Dak, Dak Prescott's 34-31. to In the AFC, the Steelers beat the Chiefs with six field goals with a score of 18-16, to and the P Patriots beat out Houston. With the Steelers game, it was just like what their uh, second to last game against the Bengals when Boswell was just nailing all the field goals, and that's how they won. Yeah. In the NFC Championship game, Atlanta beat Green Bay with the score of 44 to 21 to advance to the Super Bowl. The Patriots beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 36 to 17 in the AFC Championship to join Atlanta. Oh yeah, we see we see how far field goals can only get you. <laughs> they, you know, Steelers had a chance, but. Patriots were just on top the whole yeah. time. I mean, they definitely had times they were in the game, but they just couldn't capitalize. And with the Patriots, man, you have to make zero errors if you want to beat them. With the Falcons blowing out the Packers last Sunday, they finally reached the highest of, the, of games in the NFL for just the second time in franchise history since 1999 with their opponents, the New England Patriots. The Patriots, however, will be traveling to their seventh Super Bowl since 2002 and their ninth in franchise history. Have, having winning four out of the six uh, of their last appearance, they will most likely be more claimed than the Falcons. With this game also, Tom Brady will be searching for that fifth ring that, that's been avoiding him for a few years now. You know, the Falcons offense, they're unstoppable at this point. I mean, you got Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, Matt Ryan. Uh, Matt Ryan has been... You got been, Sanu, too. You got Sanu, Gabriel. They got some weapons, man. They, they do. definitely do. Matt Ryan has been deadly this season and even more in the postseason. During the regular season, he ranked second in passing touchdowns with only, with only throwing a total of seven interceptions. With a player like Julio Jones to throw to, it makes his job much easier. Julio, on the receiving end of things, is also putting up amazing numbers. Even after missing two games this season, Jones was still able to come in second in receiving yards, first in yards per game, and also first in 20-plus yards, yard catches. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Overall, the Falcons' out offense have looked unstoppable in the regular season. And in the postseason, ranking first overall. The catch, the number one ranked offenses in the Super Bowl have a record of 1-5 and five since, since 2000. Tom Brady. That's all you got to say about the Patriots' offense. Yeah, man. I hate the man to play, against them, man. The man played 12 games this season and managed to throw 28 touchdowns and just two interceptions. Brady's nice play recognition, leadership, and skill help propel this offense to be the, as, as amazing as it is. During the beginning of the season, it looked like any QB could step into this offense and be successful. When Brady was out for his suspension and the Patriots had two different quarterbacks step in, they went three and one. Yeah. So this guy, Chris Hogan, man. He's, he's a tank. Yeah, man. He's just like he came out the woodworks. I mean, I, honestly, I didn't know who he was before Brady made him who he was. But he looked like an all-pro He looked like an all pro in his last meet with the Pittsburgh Steelers. The receiver had only 600 yards in the regular season. But in the postseason, he has racked up 275 yards and two touchdowns. Brady and Belichick will surely be looking to get him involved more in their upcom upcoming matchup versus the Falcons. So we talked about, about the offense. Offense can only do so much, but what do they say? Defense, Defense wins, wins the champions. Super hey, Championship. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> when the Falcons' offense being uh, superb this season, their defense hasn't exactly followed in their steps. The Falcons' defense ranked 27th among league averages, making them most, the most unbalanced team to ever make the Super Bowl. The Falcons will be relying on their young develop, developing players such as Jalen Collins, Devondre Campbell, and Vic Beasley. 
we'll have to see if these young guys can really step up for their ultimate challenge versus New, New England. Yeah, Vic Beasley, man. He's a dog, man. He's a player, man. He's a football player. But you got the Patriots defense. Again, number one ranked at ranked offenses in the Super Bowl are one and five since 2000. But the Falcons aren't just playing a solid defense. They're playing the number one defense, only allowing a total of 15.6 points um, this season. However, that shouldn't take away that the Falcons offense isn't extremely explosive. After shutting down Antonio Brown last week, cornerback Malcolm Butler will have even bigger tests in the game guarding Julio Jones. If you ask me, I hope it, it, he don't want to go man to man, man. Julio, he's just a different breed. It's going, I think it's going to be a lot of double teaming, you know, a lot of the linebackers underneath, you know, just making sure Julio don't go too crazy in the game. I agree. So we talked about the offenses and defenses. Who do you pick to win the Super Bowl 51? Oh, man. <laughs> See, I hate to go against Brady, but I got Matt Ryan in this one, man. I just feel... You know, the Falcons offense is too too elusive. I mean, you're gonna have to you're gonna I, I just I just feel the Falcons really got this one, man. I agree. I'm I'm going with the Falcons. You know, everyone talks up the Patriots, blah talks them up nonstop. Well you know what? Their time has to end eventually. So I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons. Thank you for turn, tuning in to this week's episode of Put Me in Coach. Tune in next week to get a full recap of Super Bowl fifty one and NBA coverage. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, TLTC TV. I'm Corey Lang. And I'm Robert Thompson. And good night. Good night.